Welcome to the Vinny Rock Podcast. Are recording. Hey, what's up, guys? It's the Vinny Rock Podcast. Um, I'm here with a good friend of mine. We'll talk about that in a little bit. We'll talk about it now. Who gives a shit? Oh. Clint Romache. How's it going? Clint fucking Romache. You got to get closer. Just, oh, I'm trying. It's just like college, bro. Get in there. Oh. oh. <laughs> Hand behind the head. <laughs> got it. <laughs> I, just, I just got to shave so you don't have to put a ponytail in. You look so good, though, right now. <laughs> he just got his haircut done at Throwbacks Barber Company. No big deal. It's owned and operated by Beard.com, man, which is super cool. That's obviously one of our sponsors, but my company, super proud of that. Um, Black Ops Grooming as well. We don't talk about that much, but that's an exciting one to see. And, and today, you know, you're in town helping yep. us with that and, and doing some promotional stuff. Promotional stuff on that. Letting, the, letting us tell the got story. Got the straight edge, some of that on yeah. my face today. How long has it been since you had a straight razor shave? Straight razor shave? Just like you did today. Have you ever had one? Oh, I'm trying to think. My, I know I had a, one of my old team leaders when we got back from, I think it was Afghanistan. Freaking, yeah. We were up in Minnesota where he's from. Yeah. And yeah, we went to a random, you know, straight razor they spot. Did it, and right? They did it. Yeah. Put the hot towel. It's everything. different, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's something about knowing that guy can kill you right now. That's how I feel every time. I'm like, <laughs> it's like, cause so, so there's it's like, this, I hope you don't sneeze as you're getting right. Like, yeah. I always think about like, well, you guys today sitting there cracking up jokes and stuff and I'm sitting there trying not to laugh. <laughs> It's like, oh, this is going to be self-inflicted. <laughs> That's my whole thing, too, because I, I don't know. I mean, now that I've been using it for so long, I talk and stuff to, like, stop talking. Yeah. In my bed. I'm so comfortable with it. Oh, man. All right. Either way, that's obviously one of our sponsors. Um, here's a cool one. Um Core Medical Group. Have you, have you ever thought about getting your blood work tested? Seriously, like to see no. where your testosterone I mean. levels are? I'm going to talk I mean, to my buddy. I'm going to see if he, he, he's going to... I was going to say, I don't think I've had an STD in a while, so I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that kind if of test. If you take doxycycline, <laughs> it covers everything, supposedly. Yeah. Remember doxy? That's what they give you overseas Dox- so, so you, to keep you from getting malaria, but it's the... It's the, it's the cure-all. Yeah, it's the cure-all. <laughs> it's the cure-all. But uh, Core Medical Group is a cool company, man. They, um, they do testosterone replacement therapy. Okay. But I started a program with them because they're finding that TRT is helping guys with traumatic brain injuries. Because traumatic brain injuries, it ends up turning into having pituitary issues and hormone secretion issues. And so your body stops promoting certain hormones and testosterone is one of them. And so you see a lot of increase in depression and everything else because men who are 29, 30, you know, in, in the mid-range age. Testosterone levels of like a 60-year-old. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, and so when I had my test, it, uh, I was surprised. I was like, hmm. well, whatever. Let's see how it goes. And I was in the uh, close to almost... 200 is pretty much where I was at and the average is somewhere in the, the four and is a higher three and four and so I was like whoa that's weird come to find out a few other things you know were a little off of my blood work and so they tested them they went even deeper into what normal companies test they went even further into it because you know you can't just supplement TRT and think it's going to fix everything there's yeah. a lot of other things that they need to fix sometimes and so they went deep into it man it was pretty cool to see and now I'm on the program I think four weeks now and I'm seeing significant change in mood and everything else but not even that you know recovery is nice I feel like, like yeah I feel like a man again <laughs> <laughs> no but it's a cool program man. And, and and we actually ran this program for I think it was 40 different veterans and it was a 98% return rate of low testosterone. Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? That, that's, <laughs> that's huge. That's a better score than I've ever seen on any high school test I ever took. Right. So that's, I was pretty impressed with that, man. So uh, Core Medical Group, I think, is doing something pretty cool. It's one of those very... It's kind of that uncomfortable subject sometimes that yep. people are uncomfortable to hear and think about. But truthfully, is like us as men, we, we're supposed to have testosterone, testosterone in our system and if combat related stress has somehow dumped that and that might be a leading cause and why we have a lot of guys who are depressed you know and unmotivated and unhappy uh, it's because their hormones are probably off balance and so if that's the case i recommend you guys go get tested um they make it affordable for guys and so um if you're curious about it hit me up i'll give you all the information and there's something I, i'm going to yeah, try and hit you up I'd, with that it's, wouldn't have been i mean what does it hurt i, I wouldn't even thought of it I right mean, this, is, this, this is really my first exposure to it and so. i'm trying to see in, in, as much as it's this weird space I'm okay with being in that weird space if it's going to oh. help more veterans, right? Like, yeah. test it on me first, and if it works, I'm going to promote it. Heck yeah. I mean, and I think that goes back to there's no one perfect solution for everybody. So right. let's, you know, right. keep our... Well, 
hey, if you go get tested and yours is low, then you're like, hey, that's a cool thing. That's another thing we can fix. You know what I mean? Psychology, I mean, uh, you know, finding a right psychiatrist, whatever, that's another thing we can fix. We don't always need to to resort to the chemical, uh, you know, painkillers and everything else if, hey, maybe it is just a blood thing and we need to get the hormones balanced, you know? So for me, I'm pretty excited about that. Guys, go check out Core Medical. Um, Another one of my sponsors is called Temple 57. It is a security company that does personal security down in LA, but all over really globally. But right now they picked up a contract with a major, uh, technology company. I don't know if I can name it, but either way, a lot of cool jobs out there for veterans. They want to hire veterans first for this this particular thing. So if you're in Los Angeles area and you're looking for some work, uh, if you have experience in the space of personal security, um, go hit up temple 57. If you guys have any questions, hit me up with that. And, Hmm. Let's see. There's another one. Gold. Let me ask you about gold. gold, man. What do you know about gold? I know it's going for like 340 an ounce right now. How do you know that? I don't know. I'm just throwing a number out there. Oh no! I, I like, just I thought you knew that. I was like, okay, no. you're, you're, it's higher. It's higher. <laughs> okay. What's that, Luke? Probably thirteen hundred. Thirteen hundred now. So how do you know? So my, my 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 business partner and one of my close friends, uh, Luke, is in the room with us today. How do you know so much about gold, Luke? <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't hear that, he said he watches gold rush gold. well gmr gold is, is one of my sponsors man what, what they have is a program the bullion box essentially is you pay 100 or 200 300 whatever dollars a month but that hundred dollars return is a hundred dollars in gold sent to you mm. so you can actually have the gold in hand certified sure. and everything and for me it's kind of like my fun way of saving and showing the kids look at these cool coins here's the yep. silver ones here's the gold ones and you know they get to look at them they enjoy it it's something that my father never really did, but but it's something I don't know. I'm always trying to find something cool to share with the kids. Yep. Nope. But at the same time, if I'm able to put away a hundred dollars here, here and there, and there. yeah, and, and so I don't spend it because money burns in my pocket. You know what I mean? This is kind of the system that I'm trying well, to go with. And I mean, it's always going to be worth something too. I that's mean, the, the hundred cool. bucks that you throw in the bank account, though. I mean, just with inflation and right. the never know. Well, that thing is precious metals. Yeah. It's kind of it kind of stays consistent. consistent. Well, yeah. You know, and there's obviously there's things out there like like Bitcoin and stuff that is really hot right now and, and it goes up and it's doing good and all these other things. But See, like, I always try to convince people, just buy a gun. <laughs> That's always a good investment because I, I can walk into any bank with a gun and get more money. That is not a good... No, that's yeah, not a no, good... No, yeah, ah. no. <laughs> Stick with horrible, gold. I'm, horrible life advice. <laughs> gold will go farther for you, I promise. <laughs> Well, that's uh, J. Moore Gold. And the other thing is Willie Peach Chocolate. This is my last sponsor, but I'm excited about this one. Willie Peach Chocolate, they do, he's a veteran who grows his own, um, he grows his own peppers in his yard. Like okay. he started doing his own yard and he's growing them and then he makes chocolate with it. And so it's all homemade. Okay. And there's, man, I should have grabbed you one. There's one at the barber shop. You guys had, had yeah, that? Yeah, that's dude. What, Okay, I was wondering dude, what that. Dude, you should have had one because he has some that are super freaking hot, but it's still, and he has some with black rubber coffee in it. He has some with, with, um, uh, he's trying to do one with Let's Drink Whiskey. He's just doing all these cool all little the- flavors, and it's pretty cool. But that's Willie Beach Chocolate. You guys check him out. Either way, I'm done with sponsors. There's millions <laughs> others. Let's Drink Whiskey is always there. But I want to talk about you. Um, a lot of cool stuff been coming down the pipe with you, right? Like, yeah. Like from the book to now the Netflix series, and that's doing really well. The documentary series Netflix did has been phenomenal. Um, yeah. It's been great to see that project go forward. Yeah, like I said, the, the book has been crazy. You know, yeah. went from the heart. That's huge. To paperback to, you know, now having Sony pick it up a few years ago for a movie option. Um that book, man, how long did it take you to, to, to write? I mean, I knew it took you a long time to even decide to write a book, right? That's like... Yeah, it was... Like I said, I was kind of reluctant at first because, I don't know, I, I, I didn't want people thinking I was going after 15 minutes of fame. Right. You know, and immediately receiving the medal and you get the spotlight put on you, you know, it's it's a weird space to be in because, right. I mean, deep down inside, it's like, I didn't do anything special. What about what about these eight guys that are no longer here? That's you the know? thing is, I think you did it right. The way you, the way you kind of presented yourself, the way you kind of uh, promoted not even yourself, the story. It was like, you know, it's about telling the story. Yeah. You know? And then I think the way you did that was huge. And the book itself, when you read it as a testament to like kind of the direction you wanted to go with it, I think was, was respectful. It was, a, I mean, just that we were talking about on the, the drive up here. Um, you know, it was very therapeutic for me. It took almost two years to complete. Yeah. And a big portion of that was going around and talking to all the guys again, to get their perspective, sitting down with them for three to five days, you know, and half the time would just be bull BSing about the random things of whatever's going on and would get into yeah. the story a little bit. Right. And then, you know, you'd hear, and it was really interesting to see how like memory over time, mm-hmm. something that's crystal clear to me was a total, you know, fog to someone right. else. 
or how you might have been two feet away and what I saw was different compared what to what you saw yeah. was and and to bring that all together, you know, really told a more full story of the guys that didn't get the national attention. Right. You know, Lieutenant Bunderman and, and Larson and Raz did I mean heroic things. Yeah. And to help give them a voice and give it back. And the other awesome dynamic was it you know, those eight guys we lost, they're no longer here to tell their stories. Right. And I think as veterans, that's something we have to continue to do, do is share our stories. Right. Because if we're not doing that, someone else is going to do it, yeah. and they might not get it done right. Right. And that's, it, that's been a big thing for the Rainy Battalion is that we've been raising the culture to be a quiet professional, quiet professional, yeah. quiet professional. It's like, and then when someone writes a book, it's almost like offensive. It's like, oh, my God, you're not yeah, supposed to do, do that. that. It's not, it's yep. not, yeah, but you know what? My son tells me, like, Dad, I want to be a Navy SEAL. I'm like, why? Because he hears Navy SEALs all, all over the, the place. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's like, so we, we've, we haven't done a good job up to, to ourselves, no credit to ourselves to promote who we are and what we, what we represent. Because we live by a code for so many years, it's hurt us. It's hurt, hurt, it's hurt the recruiting of us. It's hurt the, the legacy of us and the history of us. And, you know, we have to find a... A respectful way of telling the story and I think you did really well on your part well and I think it also comes back to of a kind of a cultural thing we have going right. on in the country right now where so few are serving I mean you look at World War II Korea I mean you know World War II was going on everybody had skin in the game right you know if you weren't over in Europe or the Pacific fighting you were building airplanes you were you know right. rationing rubber here in the states and I think we've you know in the modern conflict we've got kind of a disconnect between the less than 1% that's going over and putting the uniform on yeah. and the 99 that sets here. And like we were talking earlier today, you know, this, this conflict has been going on as long as my oldest daughter has been alive. Dude, that trips me out too. Cause you know, you know? I told my wife about this, that, you know, when I joined, my daughter was, was one years old she was about one year old. So she's 16 now. It's been going on for almost 17, 18 years. Yeah. Right. Crazy thing about it is I told myself like, you know what? I might as well serve now. Cause I would hate for my own kids to serve. So I'll fight now for yeah. my kids. And it's getting to the point where my oldest daughter Sutter's. is almost age of enlistment. And yep. I'm like, oh, shit, dude. This has been going on a long time. I mean, so much that I think sometimes people just forget or get complacent with the kind of idea. But, you know, and, we, and kinda, we got a kind of short-term memory loss right. in this country that happens. Yeah. And it's the next hottest. What's, what's going on right here, right. right now? Yeah, Kim Kardashian um, is usually on people's minds yep. other than, you know, we're still losing <laughs> veterans right now. Yeah. You know, we just lost two, two, spe two special forces yep. in, in, in a and Air a Force. JTAC, yep. right. And so it's this... You can't forget that we still have people serving. So, you know what I mean? I was having Thanksgiving with my family, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, dang, you know, I wish I, I wish I was doing something for the veterans right now. And I forget. Sometimes you forget, forget right? Yeah. Like, last two, two years before that, I was trying to do stuff for them, whether it was getting them plates or whatever the case. And I forget, man, that you get complacent in our world and, and, and worrying about ourselves so much that there's still people serving. Still man. going over there and still, yeah, continuing the mission, which right. I mean needs to happen. And that's, and I think that draws it back around to why we need to share our stories. Yeah. And yeah, there's, there's a lot to be said about being a quiet professional, being right. humble in what you've done, Correct. but it is also a job and a, and a life experience that so many Americans will never have a clue right. about. And it also comes back to, I think it's very therapeutic that when we yeah. sit here and we share our stories, we can always talk amongst ourselves as veterans. Right. And we're really, we're kind of passing back and forth, kind of your heavy load to my heavy right. load. Hear, and some yeah. days, you know, you, you need to dump on me and some days yeah. I need to dump on you. But if we can convey those st stories to civilians that have never, ever right. carried anything, well, we never have to take that back. Yeah, you said something in, 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 that, in that Netflix that I thought was awesome. You said, you know what, now that I've told you the story, it's for you to bear now. And yeah. I was like, oh, that was so killer because... The people that, you know, maybe take for granted, you know, the lifestyle they have or probably never take the second to think the, about the sacrifices that are being made daily for us to really enjoy our lives that we have here, you know, and for you to tell them that story. Thanks. So, so gut wrenching and honest. Mm. And I, I text you when I finished the book. Yeah. I was like, bro, your honesty killed me. That made it so much harder for me to read because I know that I have felt it and I've experienced very similar. Now, I've never been on a mission and lost one, but I lost one that was on a mission. And I wasn't there. And so... Reading it, it killed me so much, but I was like, that's the only way to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was the only respectful way to do it. I know some of the families didn't, 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 want, didn't want to approve of that either way, but the ones that did approve it, and you did tell the story in the most honest way. It was so hard to hear and so get wrenching, but at the same time, like it's true. Like, well, now you can appreciate the sacrifices exactly. that we do yeah. that, that people make for us. You know what I mean? I can, like I said, carry, carry a little bit of that weight. And I know it's all about going forward, though. Yeah. That's what we got to keep doing. That's a big thing, man. You know, the, you know, I, I, I like, you know, 
after reading your book, I was like blown away. It's like, man, because because I read all these guys' stories, you know, all, all the Medal of Honor recipients, their, their stories are out there. They're, they're open source. And so why wouldn't you take the time to just understand what it was that they went through? Because, you know, it's obviously a significant event, you know, yeah. and, and us who are in the military should know our own history and, and knowing the mistakes made or not the mistakes that weren't made or how they overcame. All these things are powerful in learning as well, right? Like, me as an NCO, me as a leader in, in still the military, I want to maybe use your experiences to help train others. You know what I mean? Things like that I think about all the time. Being a drill sergeant, you know, there's a moment where one of these veterans, one of these soldiers, excuse me, are probably going to have, oh, I can't finish this road march. I'm like, listen, you know, and I want to give them a piece of history like you it, don't, you know what I mean? It, it all starts with those little things right. that can add up to the big mm-hmm. things. Those and, moments of them pushing themselves, questioning themselves and driving through it. Trust me, I know as soon as you woke up that morning from your bunk and hearing it, you're sitting like, do I stay in this bunk and just let it happen? <laughs> or do I get up and do work? Yep. You know what I mean? And you, if we always have that decision. You know what I mean? There's, yeah, it was that, you that, always have that choice. And try, everyone's going to react differently. Right? You never know. There's guys who are highly trained and probably st- 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 and like, you go, man, because I can't. Yeah. Right? Yep. And I get it. Yeah. And I get it. And I have no hardships on that guy, right? None whatsoever. But I also know it's like, there's got to be more guys willing to step up than the ones that are, or else we're all fucked. Yep. You know what I mean? That's been, I don't know, it's such a, such a crazy dynamic to get your head wrapped around, you know, what you're capable of and what you're trained to do and, and what you have the potential to do. Yes. Yeah, whether you're willing to do it or not. Yes. You know what I mean? Like you, you have that, that's the choice though. That, everyone in the range of a ranger. Yep. And you know, but yeah, who, who are the guys who are willing to step up when you needed to? You never know. Yeah. I had well, a kid, dude, I tell the story, if you don't mind me, I, I tell a story about a kid. Um, I won't even say his name here, but we were in basic training. Nothing impressive. Very small guy, very skinny mm-hmm. guy, but he gets through basic training. Goes to Airborne, gets that, shows up to rip, and I'm like, holy crap, this guy's going to rip? Like, I don't know how he's going to make it. Tiny little dude. <laughs> Seriously, like soaking wet, 110, maybe. Yeah. Then he makes it. I'm like, how, who is this kid? Like, how? Goes, first mission. I mean, we got deployed within 30 days of being a range of town. 30 days, boom, we're in Afghanistan. He's in BCO, I'm in ACO. They get ambushed pretty hardcore. Everyone gets pretty fucked up, right? Besides yeah. him. A squad leader and a team leader. They boom, charge up the mountain. The guy's head has a disc and they're freaking hit him. They're, they're freaking throwing everything they got him. This kid charging up yes. the hill. No, dude, 30 days in range of town. Very little skill sets right now. Just, hey, just I made it to rip, let's go. You know, and, the, and they're like, follow me, you know, and he's just running up the hill. He gets shot in the mouth, right through the lip. He must have looked left and went right through his lip. Doesn't realize it. Gets shot in the head. It goes around and rides out of his freaking Mitch, boom, out the back end. And he still continues. All three of them are able to eliminate the threat. Then they come back, call for backup, blah, 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 blah. You know, but you, like this is the, the most unassuming person. I'll tell you what, I'll go to war with that dude any fucking day. You know, sometimes, I mean, that, that's kind of like one of those beautiful things you don't realize you're seeing until you see it. Yeah. And that's like the heart, the heart of someone. I mean, I to be able to touch that. that and to expand that. I mean, I, I still, as a leader, that was the hardest thing for me to inspire in guys. It's like, all right, you might not be able to do 200 push ups, but if you got heart, yeah, that's gonna carry you. Yeah, you, you yeah, you're more than your biceps will. That's dude. It's funny. Like I really believe wrestling is a very strong foundation for kids and in in, in in identifying themselves, knowing about themselves. But like I can see out of my kids, who has this natural heart that is like whoa, they'll go a little bit further than anyone else yep. just to try. Just for no, there, there's no gold at the end of this freaking rainbow, man. There's just push, right? Like yep. there's you get a little little metal that doesn't do nothing for you, right? But for some reason. There's some kids on that mat that'll go that extra mile. And I'm like, damn, that heart right there is so hard to find because yep. there's so little of that in this world because you never know if you're going to say I quit. You never know. Mm-hmm. A kid today in the, in the barbershop, he was like, I want to be a ranger. I'm going to do And I, there's a lot of kids that say like, oh, yeah, cool, man. <laughs> you never know if you're going to say I quit. You never know because I yep. never knew. The hardest thing I ever did was freaking, it was a uh, hell week. They call it in football. And I was like, I didn't quit then. But that, what is that? You know what I mean, like then, then, in, then, in, uh, you know, rip. I didn't quit that, but still, I, there was moments I said, oh, this is yeah, stupid. This, this sucks. I, yeah, I, I really like, want to go home yeah, right now, but it's, it's finding and, that and, little and, extra. And th- thank God I was never in a position where I was in some kind of mission like yours, right? Because you still don't know. I can't tell you. I can tell you, hey, I've been in engagements. I can tell you that. I can tell you I fight back. I tell you, you know, I'm charging with my dudes and we're kicking in doors and all good. But that moment where it's like, oh my goodness. This Look, shit's if real. I expose myself, game yeah. over. I can't tell you. I, I, I feel like I'd say yes. But like, let's be honest with ourselves. Not until you've been in that moment and made that call, you can't say you're going to do it or not. You know, and that's, I don't know, that's kind of something that's interesting talking to people. Right. And that's why I just kind of, re- you know, gravitate back to, I didn't know what I was going to do that right. day. Had no clue. Right. Why did I act that way? Half the time, I don't remember what my thought process right. was. It was just, this has to get done and let's do this and let's do yeah. that. And as the, as the day went on, 
you know, people are like, that was a 15 hour firefight. You know, <laughs> I, you, you so did like more than hours, just, bro, I don't even yeah, <laughs> it was like some, some, some things seemed like took forever and it was two seconds oh my and goodness. some things that took two seconds took two hours. Um, and it was just constantly, like I said, it went back to, you didn't want to let anyone else on the team down. Yeah. And it comes back to, it wasn't a motivation of trying to kill more of them than they were trying to kill of us. It was a motivation of love to go up and knowing that if, you know, our roles were reversed, Gallegos was yeah. coming to get me and yeah. I was going to go get him. And I, you, you know, it's, you know, it's funny. I tell people like, and it's probably the, like earlier kind of leadership was all based off being a tyrant, right? Mm -hmm. Be the biggest asshole in the room. Oh, you're yeah. going to follow. Later on, as you start really seeing war in our time and understanding how to lead, it's it's nothing but love. It's love. The, love. the best leadership yep. is based off of love. I care so fucking much about you. I'm going to make the best possible decision for us. And if we all die, we do. But yep. it was with the most best of intentions because we had a mission to provide, right? And that's the most like, to me, raising kids is love. Yep. Raising soldiers is love. love. It's the same fucking thing. Yeah. I had the biggest issue with this because I'd come back from overseas and I'd still love my troops so much. My soldiers, I'd be like, I want to know what they're doing. I want to make sure they're safe at night. I want to I wanna go drink beers with them. to make, you know. And yep. it's like, I couldn't disconnect the two. And I did it when I got into the Border Patrol, I did the same thing. I couldn't disconnect. Yeah. I wanted to always be with my guys because I love these dudes. But when on a mission, I became all of a sudden, I went from infantry to a medic. Now there's even more Ooh. love there, bro. Yeah, I'm like... That's... Deeply compassionate about their lives and their health and their feet and their fucking backs. And like, you know what I mean? Like the dumbest shit, but I'm so involved. Every, you know, I knew each one's little thing. Yep. Now I'm medic. Yep. I'm like, oh, this is worse than being an dude. I used to only have to kick in doors and fucking worry. Now I'm like so concerned yeah. about what they Change eat. your socks. <laughs> Change your socks. Yeah. I'm like, well, how's your blood pressure today? You know, I'm like, what the fuck, dude? But it's all based off of love. love. Yeah. And there's there, like, if, if a leader can't understand that, they're going to miss this very important part of what they're doing. Well, that, that was one of the first things, like one of the greatest leaders I had in joining the military, Sergeant Gariantes. He, he was my first kind of NCO that really took me under his wing yeah. and showed me what it was to be a leader. And he simply gave me this lesson. He's like, you know, a good leader will change his leadership style to every subordinate underneath him. Nice. And a bad one will expect every one of them to change to them. Fuck. You know, yeah. and, and that contributes back into when you get to learn each one of those guys yeah. as an individual. That's huge. That's huge. I tell people that. Yeah. You know, they understand you're not, you know, duty's going to make them follow orders. Yeah. You know, yeah. Hey, it's your rank, job. Rank to go structure. Also, they're going to do it. They're going to, they, they're going to just say no matter what, but, but when you can instill that loyalty and love in them, when they know, bro. Hey, you know, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get, you know, I, I'm going to go out tonight and have a good time. And you got a Joe that comes back, gets a DUI. Yeah. You know, and it's like, dude, I, yeah, yeah, I get yeah, it. You fucked up. Yeah, I get it. You fucked up. But when you can show that loyalty too of, Hey, look, I understand the situation. I know this is, yeah. you're not just getting a DUI and a check, check mark and you're automatically a shit bag. Yeah. But Hey, what was the situations of what right. happened with you? And right. when you address that specifically and yeah. break it down to the individual level, you start building that loyalty and yeah. love that it just cannot yeah. be simulated. And the same time, it's like, ah, dude, you made a mistake and got caught. Yeah. We all do it. We all do and, it. Yeah. And some of us don't get caught. It's fucking part of it, dude. I tell people like, you like when, when I had new brand new privates, I'd make them do 20 questions and I'd ask 20 questions about them. Very specific. Who mm -hmm. raised you? Who raised you? Your yep. mom, dad, your grandparents, maybe your orphanage. I need to know that. So I know how to raise you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yep. need, who, who, was, did, you, did you ever get spanked as a child? Which what was a, what was the hardest thing you've ever experienced in life? All these things. Cause like, let me know what the fuck makes you tick, bro. Cause if I know how you make you tick, I know how to make you go, go through a yep. fucking I know world. how to yep, motivate yeah. you. Yeah. And I think I had a little guy and we could, we're running out of battery. So I'm going to finish the story and I want you to plug everything you got and we're fucking done. But, but this is <laughs> super dope. We're going to have to do it again. Yeah. But, I had a little guy named James, and he was falling out of a road march, and he's probably like, you know, 5'8", small dude, but he's always have trouble with road marches, the short legs always do. Yeah, and he's tell like, me about oh, it. He goes, Joe, I don't think I can make it. I was like, I knew James's father was a ranger in Vietnam. And mm -hmm. I was like, hey, James, what would your father think right now? Look at you. You're giving up on yourself. What would your father think? And he looked at me, boom. This dude could have gone. He, he found that next the level. The, yeah, he told me, then he was like, damn, Joe, you knew exactly what to say. I was like, I do, man, because I knew you. I yep. knew you. I knew every single question. I read every single answer, and I knew how to make you motivate. But that's how I do it with everyone. I knew every single one. I know all my kids. I know them. I know how they think. I know when my daughter doubts herself, and I was like, hey, knock it off. Yep. I know what you're doing right now. I know another daughter. I don't even have to motivate her. She's just going to do it. You know, I have another daughter who doesn't believe anything she can do. And I'm like, trust me, mama, you're amazing. Just do it. You know, but you know how to push each individual, dude. Yep. You can't just expect them to all conform to just yeah. the one style. And the people that take the time to get to know them is because it's love. Yeah. Jeez. 
weird concept. I know. People think, you know, combat and military service is all about, let's do push-ups and go kill things. Right. It's so the Uh, other side of it. So you got to give a fuck about that person. Absolutely. You got to care about them so much that you, 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 they know you care because they know you're going to make the right decision for them. Holy shit, bro. <laughs> I wish I didn't run out of batteries. It's a new system. I, I fucking feel bad. We're going to have to do this again. But dude. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's been an honor just being a friend of yours. You know what I'm saying? And, and, yep. and I'm here to help in any way, shape or form. But everything you're doing right now is, is awesome in the space. And I hope people start to. I try and help you so much. I want people to know your name. I want them to know your story for the memory of everyone who's been involved with you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I appreciate that. Man. Yeah, man. I mean, it's been good to just be able to hang out today. I mean, yeah. how long has it been since? Dude, it's been a while. It has. It's been a while. We'll go grab some beers later. Yeah. Or I'll grab beers. You can I, I don't even think that was a question. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I was, like, like, was kind of like, confused. Are you my bad, maybe. <laughs> uh, well, dude, man, you guys don't forget to check out Clint's book. If you guys haven't read it, I promise you it is one of the most. And it's available on audio, too, for all the oh, Marines out there. Yeah. Yeah. Audio book <laughs> for them. <laughs> you guys check it out. It's called <clears throat> Red Platoon. Um, it is just a testament to, to, to the men who served and telling their story the right way with the most honesty and as hard as it is to read, I felt it was with the most respect. It was great. And guys go also, if you guys are listening, don't forget to check out on, on, on Netflix. Netflix. They have a new series called Medal of Honor. You could check out Clint's story. Um, and again, man, this is cool. I hope we, we, we got to do this more often. I got to come visit you next summer. Something. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you. Hey, later. later.